The main thing is always try to get as much stage time as you can. I mean, mm. a lot of times people just want to make it, and they have a couple of jokes, and they and they kill it whenever they go on stage, and they believe like that's all that it takes. But really, the more that you sharpen your knife, your, your machete, whatever it is that you when you're on that stage mm-hmm. and have that ability to walk out there uh, is something that I you know always recommend that people just and you know don't try to make the money first. You know, mm. try to. Try to be great at what you do first, you know. And then even to this day, I mean, as you can tell, I mean, you can hear from the roar of laughter in the background. <laughs> I, I have a tendency of putting really sharp comics on oh, in front yeah. of me so yeah. that I ha- have to go out there and put in the work. Because right. these guys, you know, that's what happens. You can get, you can become a pro and get a little lazy and, and have the expectations of fame. But... When people spend their money, they want to laugh, and they want to laugh for real. And so I try to put myself in a situation where I have to go in there and do the work. Like, it's, it's guys, these both Henry and JJ, these yep. dudes, are they out there throwing rocks at the crowd ah. right now. Like, <laughs> shit. You know, so, so but, uh, but that's it. I mean, yeah. just stay encouraged, stay working, stay in your mindset, and try to stay free of, uh, you know, independency, trying to, like, write things and be true to yourself and, mm. Look for the comedy and the humor and the things that happen to you in life. So as comedians coming up, what are what are some tips you can have as we land this plane here? Because mm. this is, you know, it's all about just comedy and the comedy game. And what, what are some tips you can maybe share with comics? Ooh, some big tips. All yeah. right. Cut down on the booze. Don't go too hard. I was, uh, here's the problem with booze. Do you drink? Not really. Good. Good for you. But uh, just... I love it so much, and I want to party, and I want to get drunk, but it kills your whole next day. Yeah. And I have bad anxiety, so when I'm hungover, my anxiety goes through the roof, and I'm like, you suck, you're going to bomb, this joke isn't good, and you're trying to write, and you're like, it all stinks. Have you ever written a joke in your life? You kill yourself, you suck, you're gay. So all <laughs> that shit. Again. <laughs> and uh, all that comes out, and I already have enough of that sober, so when I'm drinking, it's it's even worse. But uh, So cut back on the booze. Just write, write, write. Even when you got nothing in your head, just go back to old tweets, look at old jokes, try something on stage. If you're doing a new bit and you're kind of not doing well with it, just throw in three more sentences real quick. Like, what else? Always stretch as much as you can. Don't go out and bomb a ton. But, like, well, last night I went on stage and I was like, I'm going to riff about Atlanta a little bit. Maybe nothing will come. Maybe it'll be humiliating. But it's not the end of the world. So... Even when you're like, all right, pull out, pull out. Do three more sentences. Just say, fuck it. It's almost like when you're doing reps and you're on that last one and you can't do it, but you want to give up and your friend goes, just push it a little bit. Even if you just get it up to here Mm. instead of not doing it, Mm -hmm. just that will give you some muscle, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with comedy. Just push it a little further. Just stretch it as much as you can until you feel them like, all right, all right, we got it. And if you do that enough, over years you'll become amazing because you, you... a, you're building something. B, you're learning what it feels like to be frazzled and and push that down. You know that feeling of panic when you're on stage? You're like, this is bombing. Abort. Mm-hmm. Keep going and push your abort button further away, you know? So you can build that that callus of like, I can take a little bit of bombing. I can take it because I'm such a wuss. Like People go, oh, you got so many punchlines. I'm like, yeah, I'm scared of silence. I'm not this brilliant writer guy. I'm just I'm punching it up so I don't have to feel anything. So, like, yeah, always push it a little further. Try to riff. Do that joke that you're scared of doing. Sometimes when I'm on stage, I'm, like, a little nervous, out of my element. I'm like, this isn't going as well as I hoped. That's when you try the new bit because that's when you're the most vulnerable and raw. And it'll actually kick you into being yourself. It's almost like when you're, trying to, when you're with a girl and you're trying to be cool and funny and it's not going that great. Just go... Well, this isn't going that great. Hold on. Let me let me reboot here. It just it's the it's the thing your brain is telling you don't do. Do that sometimes. Go towards that shit. It's like the Del Close thing. Follow the fear. Mm-hmm. Go towards the fear sometimes. And everything in your brain saying don't, but that's when you should. And it makes the fear go away, ironically. Go into it. Lean into the skid. It's like that Bill Burr thing. He's like when you're doing stand up, if you're bad at going to crowd work, go to crowd work because you got to learn it. And the only way to learn it is to dive in. It's like basketball players. I can't go left. Well, then work on going left. It's the same thing. So this is all, you know, heavy inside baseball anal, but just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> try it. 
Try it. Right down the, you know, you got that weird joke. You're like, this is weird. Try it. What's going what's gonna to happen? This is all, pra- that's the cool thing about stand-up. It's all batting practice until TV or the special. Obviously, you don't want to use the audience too much and just be like, you guys are my canvas. I'm going to take a shit on you, and whatever works, I'll keep it, because then you'll be a bad comic. Mm. So play- walk that line of being a pro, killing, giving them a good show, and working out your shit and trying shit, and that's a, f- that's a good line. And I think some people respect it. They want to hear the new shit. They want to hear you working it out. So, yeah, that's my tid. Everything has a process. Like with math, you learn the formulas and shit, and then you start to get results. Because you can do every fucking problem if you know the formula. You get what I'm saying? You got a formula? Yeah, yeah, I got a formula. Talk to him. My formula? You give up the whole sauce for real, bro. Without the chefs, though. Yeah, you just, that's what I'm saying. You don't let nobody interrupt your sauce when you cooking. People have lost the understanding and the value of the word you. Because at the end of the night, you got to lay down by yourself and get up in the morning. Look yourself in the mirror. You got to be comfortable with all the decisions that you make as a human and stop depending on other people to supply your happiness, wants, needs, thoughts, and desires. Mm. It's selfish, but it's real. And when you start believing in other people, that's how you open yourself up to disappointments, failures, heartbreak, depression, all that shit. Because you, your expectations is the fastest way to disappointment. Don't never let nobody or nothing disappoint you. You got to be comfortable with yourself and know that you are the key factor that can change your situation, your life. At the end of the day, you are the fucking, you are the key. You all the DJ Khaled said major keys. Yeah, yeah. But you are the key. And every time you can put some knowledge and work it and execute it, it's just like you got another one on your, on your loop of keys. The more keys you got, the less you need from other motherfuckers. If you're looking for somebody to make you financially happy and that's all you need, you want somebody because they got money or whatever you think they can do for you, think of how you're going to feel when you're in that position and, and you're not looking for nobody else to give you what you've been craving. If money is your vice and you get some money, then what? You're going to have to find another vice because mm-hmm. money ain't going to be your, it's not going to be a drug no more because you're in the excess of it. And it's the, the thrill is gone. Like the old blues song, B.B. King, the thrill of it is gone. It's the thrill of the chase. It's a lot of shit that we think that we want until we actually get it. So is that where you are right now? Like you've gotten a lot of what you want and it's not what you thought it would be? No, it's not even that. It's just that. That's why I can say that I'm happy with where I am and my success as a person or however people may see it or not. I do what makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's not a Ferrari that fucking, that's your dream car. Your shit might be right there in your grass. It might be the fucking Mustang that you wanted in high school or, you know what I'm saying? You always just wanted a GT or some crazy shit. Like whatever it is that you desire, I see. That's what separates the people from like, like greatness and regular motherfuckers. Desire, the desire to be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you look, I'm sitting here watching these motherfuckers build this car. You might mm-hmm. look at that shit and be like, I don't want that shit. But that's somebody's dream car. And that's all they ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's the type of shit I'm saying. It's like, what is it that makes you happy? It might not even be an iPhone. It might just, you just got to live for yourself is basically what I'm saying. And then what basically the how how I've attached tacked anything is just okay who is doing this the best how do I do it better than them so mm-hmm. you have to look at what you want and then who has it and then how you can do it better than them mm. so it's very simple you know so how can you make this podcast you're interviewing people okay who's got the best interview podcast you know in this field okay who is he oh he's interviewing more famous people than me all right, I got to interview more famous people. He's interviewing more interesting people than me. Just analyze who's doing the thing successfully and then mm-hmm. be better than that. Who are some people you've been analyzing used, in yeah. terms of podcasts? Or just in your career, all all the stuff you've been doing? I mean, you know, for stand up, it was like I just looked at the game. I was like, okay, what do I need to do? First of all, I need to get undeniably funny. That's the first thing. How do I get undeniably funny? I get on stage as much as I can. So I was barking for a club which means handing out tickets Mm. to go to a club in exchange for stage time so i was getting up tons of times a week in front of real audiences very early on in my in my career i was probably getting up five seven times a week in front of real audiences early in my career unheard of so i had this in new york this is in new york yeah 
then uh, I stopped working at one of those clubs. I kind of got like fired from barking or one club closed. They didn't ask me to work at the other one. So I, uh, I basically, we found this other place that was around the block and they had shows there and um, they were just kind of like free shows asking people to come off the street. And I got involved in that club and I started working for one of the guys there and I, we were just kind of friendly and I was running his shows. I just found a place to get up consistently. Then I started running a couple of shows there with friends. We would just ask people, strangers from the streets to come in. And um, it was great because when you have your own show, you have your own show. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it might be repeat audience. Mm-hmm. So you can't work the same jokes out because it's the same audience. So it's good because you're practicing new jokes, but you're not getting good at anything. You know, it's like you're learning a new um, like pool shot every week. It's like you're not getting really better at pool. You just kind of get marginally better at these new jokes that you never really get to try. Mm. But we could work on the same jokes for months because it was a different group of people coming in every week. So we did that. Then I once I felt like I was undeniably funny, at least funny to the point where I feel like I could you know, be on stage with these other guys who were on stage. And how long in your career was that? A few years in, I mean, yeah. I mean, now I would look back and be like, "Oh, I was awful." But for the time, I was able to go, you know, I'm I, I, I'm good enough to be on the stage with these guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, "Why are they on the stage?" So I started analyzing the people I saw at all the clubs, and it was like Sherrod Small, like James Smith, and these kind of comics, and um, they were all on Best Week Ever. I noticed all the comics who are best week ever were performing at all the clubs, Christian Finnegan. And I was like, okay, I need to get on a show that is a weekly show that will give me some leverage. So now, cause it's not just about funny. It's like, if you're as funny as all the other guys, okay, you got to be funnier than them and have something. So I got on a uh, guy code and that was my weekly. Now I had some leverage. Now I can go to a club and be like, Hey, I'm on a TV show every week. Can I get on? Yeah. How do you how'd you get on Guy Code? I uh, make pitched, it sound so easy. Uh, yeah, it was it, it was it was kind of there was some you know one of the good things is like knowing what you want to do. Do you have any closing advice or any like of your favorite comedy wisdom that you've gathered over being around the top comics in the world? Uh, some of it like so uh, be obsessed is my advice to a lot of people. Uh, be obsessed with it. Okay. Uh, work as hard as you can, get up as much as you can. You know, it's not like you have to go sit there and write all day long, but just go be out, be amongst comics, hang out with comics, be around, have a fun time, drink, party. You know, it's like we're in a field that you get a drink every night. <laughs> like, and that's work. That's truly work. Like, it's uh, it's hanging out. And then, uh, you know, so be obsessed, that comfortable thing. If you start feeling comfortable, that's the best advice you can ever take. If you're it wasn't my if you start feeling comfortable, it's time to make a change. If you're in your comedy scene and you're the you can feel yourself be the higher up of the scene, it's time to make a change. Maybe, you know, whatever whatever you can do. Uh, you know, and the other advice for uh, this is probably more an older comics. I remember Marin always told me be comfortable with silence. Mm. And so I think this is more it, like when I was first starting out, it's not it's not really advice that you know, you don't need to really worry about silence. You need to try to be hearing laughs. You're only doing five, 10 minutes. But when you, when you start headlining for the first time, uh, it was like, I learned, like, it's like, be comfortable with silence, be comfortable with like some pauses and like, you know, you, sometimes it's good. Uh, uh, hearing a big room of 2000 people, you could hear a pin drop is just as good as hearing laughter. Like, you know, cause you got their attention. Yes. And so even though it shouldn't be a long thing like i said you want to be very close to laughs but even if it's like 20 seconds and stuff like you know when you hear that complete silence that means man these people are engaged and they're really listening to what you're saying and that's a and that's a great great thing how do you create that engagement i mean you just gotta you you feel like you're always on top of them i feel like i never try to you know like i I don't ever leave too much like that's never being too far away from a laugh yeah like kind of you know, you just, you, you, there's in a way there's a panic up there. And the fact that you're, I always know where I'm going. I always know where you're going. I always know where you're going to begin. I always know where you're going to want to end. If you start a new joke, at least have a way to get into it and a way to get out of it. 
you don't want to just start a joke where you don't know how to get out of it. And you should have different exits. Like, you know, I have very I have longer jokes where I can like I can tag it five times mm-hmm. or I can only tag it one time. And, you know, and you can fill it out. Maybe if it's a good crowd, I'm going to tag it all five. If the crowd's not, you know, if it feels like they're not getting it like other crowds, I'm only going to just tag it once and just get out of the joke. Right. So, like, you just kind of fill the room out. It's all – timing is a very – you know, timing is big. It's all a very, like, uh, fluid kind of thing, man. Like, different crowds can make you do different things. You know, you have quick laughers. You have long laughers. Right. You have people that clap a lot. You have, you know – people that you feel like you got to stay on top of and you feel like you're flying because you're like I, i'm about to lose these people you know when you're doing a late show slippery you can film start, yeah. you can film start like looking around like they're like all right like you know yeah and they're just like what time is it and you're like ah, bah, 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 and you gotta like stay on them and stuff like that there's a difference it all changed yeah there's a difference between like engaged silence like you said in kind of the apathetic silence it's a fine line but you said you can feel them yeah. being engaged is it that personal material that makes them engage yeah, yeah. through the silence? Is that how I, you're able to... One thing, one thing I learned with personal material is I remember I had an old joke about something about me. A guy met, made a message, messaged me on Facebook and I was like messaged with this guy and I didn't even know who this guy was. And like it, was, it wasn't even that great of a joke. But what I always noticed, it wouldn't get the biggest laughs, but that was the joke people would always come and bring up to me after the show. Hmm. And I was like, why are they pointing out this, that's the worst joke of those sets. The other stuff murders. And it was because that's personal. So they come up to me because they're like, I've done that, dude. And so like then that joke means more to them than the other jokes that don't mean anything to them, like that are just funny. Like you can be very forgettable too. Like you can, go, you can watch a guy go on stage and murder, like we've been saying, <laughs> and then – no one and you go you when people walk out of a room you'd be like hey what what jokes did he do you'd be yeah. like oh, I don't know cuz he he cuz none of them were personal they were all just jokes like that anybody could kind of tell and not to say that they're not funny and that's not a good thing to do but if you make them personal then people are going to come up to you after the show and be like dude I done that I did I yeah I I've done that. I've been through that exact thing I always think that you want to be either be you just be the dumb guy and they can either laugh with you or laugh at you. Mm-hmm. So they're either going to laugh with you because they relate to you or they're laughing at you because you're an idiot. But both laughs count. It doesn't really matter how you laugh. So, you know, that's how I always kind of do it. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. Perfect. All right. Well, Nate Bargatze, thank you for being on um, Hot Breath here, buddy. Absolutely, buddy. Thank you. All man. right. Have a good day. Hey, Hot Brethren and Sistren. If you love comedy as much as we do here at Hot Breath, Click the subscribe button to join the Hot breath and then watch more videos to get even more comedy tips. Hot Breath.